This shape kind of pertains, you know, it doesn't roll here. It keeps, you're good. As long as it didn't get your toe. No. Um, Jeep update, check her out. So like, you gotta think with this thing, this is not ride height. Even though it's high and lifted and sick, bro, it's uh, it's not ride height. The whole project is built to, hold on, this thing's all sabered out. Uh, lightsaber, Amazon. The whole project and like the means for this is to have a low center gravity, low ride height Jeep with up travel still. So that's why we have all the intricate framework, that's why we have the work that we've done in the back. Uh, I wanna just get you guys up to speed on where we're at with this thing. It's really close. It's a lot of little things, but this, this truck is leaving the shop as just a roller. It does not need plumbing, wiring, any of that stuff. So we're just doing the bare bones fabrication on this thing, making sure we have all the components uh, and sending it on her way back to Colorado where Total Innovations and Alan and his team are gonna finish the thing up. So. This truck will be used. We build it, you know, constantly kind of with that in our minds. And I know everything else will be used, but we're not Jeep people and we're not rock crawler people. And that doesn't mean that we're not fabricators that can build functional equipment. So we consider everything with each project and each application. It's the same thing with this. So what I want to get into first, um, I'm going to set it up as far as talking about the sheet metal that's inside of here. The situation with the jeep uh, and you know it's not it's got like the oem style cage which is looks like some big old three inch chingaderas in there um we're gonna you know it's not a full chassis like cage situation so the rear chassis and the shock towers and like the cradle that's going under there for the air compressor and the tank and the battery that's all still kind of floating on the frame. So this thing is going to have flex. That's what they're built to do. The front is kind of a different story. So like where the, the powertrain is and from like almost the fender forward, that's an extremely rigid area. That's not gonna move, but some of this rear stuff is still gonna twist and articulate under articulation. What we wanted to stray away from doing was like that typical fashion of tying things in because we're so used to building vehicles where they're fully caged and they're rigid. You don't, you know that thing's not going to move where you can tie in the sheet metal to the cab and it's going to stay that way. But since we're banking on this thing articulating and flexing, we wanted to float the sheet metal just on the cab and then leave all the chassis section just pertaining to the chassis and the frame. So they're not, they can get along with each other and have enough clearance in there where they can kind of move around and it's not gonna be haphazard where it's gonna damage the seams or any of the welding or the construction. So they're not tied together. Um, that was, you know, we, we built the shock tower in there. It's all inch and a half, 120 wall chrome ollie. Uh, that's the same as the front. It doesn't need really big stuff. There's a lot of tubing and it's all in the right places. So. That's perfect for construction. I kind of had the fender up here, which we can get into. This is, this is where we're at with our fender and I'm gonna kind of go over this in a second. But what I wanna do right now is just look at the sheet metal. It's really, uh, it's been a calling job. Um, just like with Sean and Colin, they've both, Sean has put huge time into this thing. Um, it's been a labor of love for the shop. This truck kind of, it, you know, like other things, it just, escalated into more work than uh, we anticipated and it's a beautiful piece, but it's a ton of work, uh, just like anything. So there's a lot that's been in the front and a lot on the undercarriage that Sean's done and now we've moved to the back and uh, Colin's kind of been following my lead on design with the sheet metal and you know he's been executing it like insanely good. So I wanna cover that. 
get the saber light out. I'm gonna send it through the door and then we can kind of look at it from the back. Well, let's look at it from the, the rear door first. Get kind of a good bearing on what's going on here. So I can come over onto the other side. So one of the things that we wanted to emphasize on the interior of this thing is we wanted to maximize the space. So instead of like, even with, with this construction, like your shock towers are here. I'm gonna get a Clico tool to take this off to show you what we have these here for. But just on this note, you know, not doing just your typical crossover tube and really ruining your space in here. So this thing is absolutely consolidated and tailored to not just the rear seat, but having as much open area in the rear as we can. So it's not just, it, it's, it's serving as like a utility vehicle that's gonna go travel on the highway, load it with bags, load it with supplies, and then boom, get on a trail and be gone for a couple days in this thing. Um, the shapes in here are pertaining to the factory rear seat. So when you put that thing in here, it's, it's beautifully built here where it is absolutely tailored right to the seat. Um, there's some gaps, you know, appropriate gaps that are equal all through everything where, you know, it looks like it's built to it. Let me get a Clico tool. All right, so like same thing, getting the hardware out. These Clicos are temporary fasteners. Uh, you guys have asked about them. I know some of you know what they are. I know some of you don't. We are going to cover the stuff on the Fab Diaries episodes. So just bear with us. Like it, there's so much that we're gonna cover. It's just, you just gotta kind of wait till it comes because there's a laundry list of it. Um, this is a removable panel. This will have just hardware here, like a 1024 uh, button head stainless in here. You'll remove this and then boom, you have access right to your shock bolt. You can easily access from where I'm at. Like my, my right hand inside the wheel well is right there touching that, but also you can get to it from here. Sean, Sean, say hi, come say hi. How's it going? Come on over here. There's pizza dude, I'm busy. <laughs> so that's Sean, you guys. He's reclusive. He doesn't really like to be on camera, but um, you know, when we're covering the Jeep, it's important to realize that this has been a huge part of his life and his uh, career here, right? Yeah. Spend some time on it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, we'll talk about Sean on his own, on his own episode. Uh, right now, hardware, just getting stuff in and out of here. You can actually get the bolt out from the other side, but we just wanted to make it easy. Um, it's just, you, sometimes you can really barricade yourself into uh, problems when you're sheet metaling something where then you're like, oh my gosh, well, we just put all this beautiful stuff in here, but how do we get this out? Or how do we, you know, navigate through this? So it's just about making stuff easy uh, and packaging things right. So with design with this, the seat goes in and it's kind of a hard edge. And then we have it drop off into a radius, um, like a smoother transition. So we have the seat in here, just as a reference, wanted to kind of show you well, I mean, I don't have both in, but you can kind of see that this thing is tailored to go right there. Just had to clear the light, but um, you can see just it's packaged accordingly. Um, you can really, uh, again, just packaging is so important with sheet metal because it's like you're skinning the skeletal system um, or the whole body, right? You have um, every part of that and you're just adding the final skin and it's got to be in the right places so you don't shoot yourself in the foot. So uh, let's go check out the back of this thing. So another thing I found interesting is with a lot of this stuff, especially when I'm working with the guys, sketching, drawing, visual communication, it's just, uh, instead of me sitting here talking with my hands like this and going, oh, well, I think we should have this here and this here, it's a lot easier on each end to just pick up a pen and like draw something um, to communicate like our, our plan of attack on this stuff. So I just, I, I have like tablets floating around the shop that are just riddled with these really quick. I come over and I'm like, well, I think we should, you know, we should do this and do this and do this, do this. And it's funny to see this now because like our end result is very similar to this chicken scratch on here. And you can kind of see where we're talking about a hump. Like we kind of had a different idea for, for the diff and the, you know, the pickup for the three link right there. Um, but you can really see that the vibe is very similar here. 
um, just kind of exploring different options per side. Um, and really, it does encompass the design that we have here. I just thought that was fun. Um, there's a lot of stuff like that. Every little, I mean, the, the thing with like our branding and the shop is design, uh, functional design. So that's why if you really start to like pay attention to the details on these things, every little tab and every break in the plating and everywhere a tube lands and an intersection and, and how every single thing is built and mounted, it has design into it. And we cover every detail like that with every build on every single part. Uh, and it, it's, it just goes a long ways. If you start to really look into it, there's design into it. And it all starts with um, just communication and a lot of visual communication with just drawing on a sketch pad or, you know, a notebook. Um, this is kind of what we went for. The shock towers are obviously in here and they're enclosed and done. So we're not going to be able to see those. We'll be able to see them through the side of the wheel openings in the rear. But, you know, you get the gist of it. Uh, obviously always do like traction um, ribs if you will Ooh, traction ribs I like that one um, just for like utility areas right so like footwell areas um, anything where you're gonna set something down this adds like an extra stiffening um, instead of just doing like a step bead roll like this you do a rib and it not only stiffens the panel but it's like it makes it a lot less prone to having crap denting it and putting big creases in this stuff functionally the shock towers are, there's a big X that goes through here uh, and it ties into the frame and it ties into the coilover mounts up here. And what we wanted to do, just kind of like I said earlier, is we did not want to just do this, you know, your mind would just want to do, okay, well, let's connect these, but you don't really need to connect these if you can have an X that's spread out and drawn out enough to tie them in where they're, they're going to feed off each other and just cross up right here. So this gave us a lot more space in here than just sacrificing with a big straight across piece. And I'll show you, I'll put the seat up and you can see that there's quite a bit of space in here. So just an example, you know, it's if you had this thing going across, you're just sacrificing that much more room and whatever goes in here, whether that's tool bags, toe straps, sleeping bags, food, soft coolers, anything like that it's just it's better to build stuff on a diet if you know that the ergonomics of this thing are going to be like utility based and recreational where you're going to want to pack this thing deep it's not going to have some big old gnarly roof rack on the top so everything needs to be encapsulated inside the cab um, so mission accomplished with this thing we did have it like there's the factory jeep kind of has like this this storage uh, basin if you will um, the packaging under this is like a cradle. Uh, it's all uh, like a, another extended tube structure under here. There's a really hardcore air compressor. And there's a big tank that goes in here and a battery. And then the exhaust is going to dump flat with the profile of this cradle. So going back to that basin that was in there, we had to delete that. It just made more sense instead of trying to make it work to just get all our packaging done outside of here. You didn't want to have the compressor in the car uh, making noise and just having all the mechanicals and the systems outside of the cab is what made sense for this application. So fuel filler is the only thing that's a little weird here because this is using, it's utilizing the factory tank. So fuel filler is usually on the driver's side and there's just too much going on now, especially with how much it bumps when it compresses that we need to get that thing going on the passenger side. It's not a huge issue. Uh, we'll probably incorporate into the fenders, but it's just the, you know, just like everything else, you got to build this thing pertaining to what it's supposed to be doing and um, getting that low ride height with still retaining six inches of up travel at ride height. That, that was the goal. Uh, and that's what we have here. It's the same thing with like the pan hard in the back and you know, the bump stops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower down the rear axle. I'll still leave the tire on, but I'll lower it down a little bit so we can kind of see where we're at on this stuff and, and um, see the inner workings of this thing. All right, so you can kind of see the inner workings of this thing. Uh, massive wheel opening, wheel tub, 
One of the things with this is just stressing like articulation all the way through. It's always like, I just, I kind of frown upon building vehicles, even like a traditional trailing arm four link vehicle where you just build it to bump and you don't actually package things when it's swinging because vehicles do that, especially a rock crawler type situation like this. So everything like the clearances on this is all built to go not just to bump and droop, but also to swing uh, maximum articulation driver passenger side. So the coilovers are kind of angled in, the bump stops are reverse style, so they're on the axle just like the front, uh, and that lets them slide really deep. These pads, it takes the full spectrum of this pad uh, when it's articulating and bumping. You can kind of get a good grasp on the cradle under here. There is that air compressor like we talked about. There's provisions for a tank that's kind of set in there. Then we'll have like a quarter inch skid plate. Hi, Mayan. We'll have a, you're good. And then we'll have a quarter inch skid plate on here that um, just is gonna be for sliding. I don't know if we do some kind of like a poly or like a plastic that's more, um, you know, down to party with sliding instead of uh, like an aluminum soft. I know some of you guys recommended something for the rest of the underbelly here. Uh, if you have like suggestions as far as maybe uh, some kind of a polycarbonate or composite type material to put under here, um, like a skid plate that would make for less friction. So this is all packaged. Um, there's definitely some welding to be done. We have limit strap provisions in here. Um, these are just our slugs that we use for any kind of bump stop application if we're using a weld on can. Um, they're machined to perfect tolerance and they're also the same exact height. Um, the, so this the end of this slug is exactly where this bump stop, the two and a half inch bump stop will be if it doesn't have that nylon spherical part on the top. So uh, we'll look at the other side just to get more of a bearing, but I want you guys to be able to kind of see there's like a valley going through here of space. So when this thing moves around and if there is flex between the cab and the rear chassis, we can get away with a little bit of that where it's not gonna you know, start tearing it wherever the silicone bronze stuff is welded to the tubes like a traditional style off-road truck. Well, it's tricky with this thing because it's so high and, and it's like it's hard. I know it's hard to conceptualize the actual ride height, but this is a, I guess you'd say this is really drooped out. I cannot wait. We're so close to getting this thing setting on the ground. We're just gonna, we'll cover the front for a second, but it's really close to being able to sit on its own weight and see it's, it's I've said it before and I'm not gonna stop saying it, but it's really nice to get the trucks rolled outside and be able to stand back and look at them under their own weight and kind of see the essence and the vibe that they put off. So you can just kind of see the packaging in here, like the, the tube work is nestled into here, but it's, you know, all the sheet metal is built around it. So you can just see straight through there, everything has wiggle room. Uh, and then obviously there's provisions for the reservoirs in just their one spot. Um, and again, everything swings and clears. The thing we're working on right now is adding, there's a A pillar body mount. I think there's a B pillar too. Yeah, there's a B pillar body mount. And then there's like, I guess you'd call that a C pillar, but there's gonna be another body mount here that we're making that's just a, like a completely custom one. Then you have your rear. So things will be rigid, but there, I, I guarantee there will still be flex because there's no triangulation of chassis. It's just all lower frame rail stuff. So working on the body mounts, those are on the table ready to be put on and finalized with welding. Um, all of the, like that upper strike pad with that big kind of triangular gussing, it almost looks like a, like a little gnome that you'd have in your front yard, like the little creepy dudes with red hats. Um, these guys all need to be double pass. They just kind of have root pass with Colin. Um, I'm just having him like the best way in the shop to get some welding in is to just do the root passes and kind of really practice your fundamentals and your foundation of TIG welding with a root pass. Um, you know, like almost a constant amperage, just smooth pass, and then kind of build up to being able to have a finish quality cover pass. So that stuff is going on. And then right now we're also working on fenders. So obviously like the, the front fender is a pretty big style uh, or I guess you'd say th the fenders are like a prominent design feature on the exterior of the truck. Um, what that means is it's something you notice. You know it's a Jeep, you know it's got big tires, 
but when these fenders are on they're they're adding you know the wheel opening is a really important part of a vehicle's exterior surfaces and and look you know you notice wheel opening so these front fenders that we've already kind of gone through um, they have that roll to them and they kind of have an aggressive kick in them and then an angle down and it's the same thing we wanted to do with the rear so we have some skins here that are laid out like this quarter is getting skinned with eighth inch plate and that's going to give us a really good tie-in to tie the fender to and then we also have a little pickup here with just clecos to hold it in for now that we're going to tie the the beginning of the fender in so this is kind of what we've been working on so far um, and it's going to have a vibe similar to this so what was important is to have just a, a kick that kind of matches the front but joey if you go over there uh, this, like I wanted, I didn't want this to be level and there's a fine line here where, you know, if you have this, I, I wanted it to have a kick here and then kind of droop down, like just have kind of a, a tail that, that started angling down and rolled down. And it's really tricky because if you don't, like you have to have a certain amount of it going down where it looks like you meant to do that because sometimes when you start messing with design and you do subtle touches if you just do enough where you think you got it but it's too close to being level then it just looks like you shit the bed and and you didn't you missed the mark on it being level so you want to actually just have enough where you know that you did it on purpose and that's the same thing with this so like if we you know it had just barely anything and i don't know what it looks like from there but if we had just barely anything it would just look like, oh man, those guys went to make it level like with the window line or something and they didn't get it. So we want to have like a decent kick in it, but not too much. And it's the same, like the rear kind of has tension coming down towards the tail lamps. And then the front has that, that peak here and then pulls tension to the headlamp. So it's just going to represent, this is going to carry this design into the rear and it's going to kind of finish off the car. On the front of this thing, I, I think last time we had it exposed where you could see like the internal ribs or the gusseting in there. So we have this thing fully boxed. Um, all the keyways, what I mean by keyways is these slots that you see are the ribs, like the, the actual internal gusseting in here picks up in these keyways. So all these tacks are tacked into the material. So it ties everything together and kind of sandwiches them. Um, this is all ready to weld. All the internals have been welded, uh, both sides. We have the sway bar that's almost ready from sway away, which is the custom bar ends that go into like the factory mechanical, uh, like electronically engage, disengage, um, like factory unit. So those are almost done at sway away. Uh, once all this is welded, we didn't want to mount the radiator yet because there's so much welding going on here that if something like, a lot of the time when we build the radiator mounts, they're like very precision. They have like, you know, threaded support rods and they're, the mounting provisions are like multiple holes. If we weld all this out and then just moves the slightest bit, then we went bed shitting again. So I just want to finalize all the mega welding on this thing and then we'll mount the radiator. I'll show you guys the radiator we have. It's the biggest unit I could fit in this thing. Uh, it is a, you know, a 600 horsepower LSA blown engine package so um, got that stuff to do I think general overview with this thing where we're at uh, we want to finish the welding in the rear finish the rear fenders there's no provision for a rear bumper Alan's got like a really heavy duty like tire swinger that's got like a crazy mechanism on it so we'll adapt that into the back um, we're gonna finish the exhaust out weld everything up here radiator mount um, provisions for the filter so the intake and the filter and then also the computer needs to be remounted up here once the hood goes on we're going to make just like on james's truck he has like a windshield cowl trim piece that's just eighth inch aluminum with stainless mesh in it so we'll probably make something like that for here and it'll kind of be like a little signature addition we do to the trucks selena's getting one too so it just makes sense to to pop that on here we need to finish we need to finish the front bumper and we need to add provisions for a fair lead and get everything squared away up front uh, the headlights are going to be something that we do need to look at there's going to be a custom grill shell that's kind of going to fit to the modifications we've made up here but um this thing is 
pretty close. I think, uh, you know, maybe like a month worth of work into this thing. And obviously we have other jobs going on. So it's like, it, it's hard to be able to work on one of these things for a month straight and we're able to do it, but, um, it just depends on the scheduling. So I think four weeks total of labor into this thing and we have a complete roller. I can't wait to get this thing out into our spot outside and look at it and see that ride height. We've been, just been seeing it in a monster truck mode the whole time because we've just been working under it and it's easier to work on it when it's higher up. The other thing is the, like the whole, this whole front half has been, you know, we haven't wanted to move it around. It was a big deal even to just 180 the truck into its spot now to put love into the back because I did not want to upset anything being square up front here. And we had to recheck it and recalibrate everything. So it's just one of those things. Um, it's not gonna be able to go down into its ride height home until everything is finalized on the chassis. The Jeep, just like every other project, is a special, unique, one-off custom build uh, for a special client. There's a lot of different stuff going on with this, a lot of different angles. If there's something that you want to see that kind of catches your eye that we didn't get into enough or um, just anything, anything you see that you want me to cover, let us know and comment. Uh, some stuff to look forward to besides the updates on the channel, um, website. We have a awesome website that's being developed right now that's gonna be turnkey. So like merchandise, aprons, hats, shop shirts, banners, stickers, all that stuff will be like a streamlined process through a website. For now, it's just an Instagram thing. It's kind of like a, when I get stuff, I put it on my Instagram and then we get rid of it and it goes and it usually goes within 48 hours. So just kind of be on your toes for that stuff. But we, we do have like a website in the works because you know, uh, with efficiency, it's the same thing with like the merchandise. As much as I love to like interact and do that, it's like me doing the legwork of, of, you know, getting that stuff to you guys. And there's gotta be, with the quantities that we're dealing with now, there's gotta be a streamlined way to do it, just to be more efficient on both ends. So the website's gonna be huge. Um, that's also gonna be a place where you can look at, in depth at all the builds. You'll be able to see everything with process pictures. Uh, and you'll also be able to schedule appointments and see kind of pricing and availability um, for projects that you might have in mind. So thank you guys again so much for just the support and uh, you know letting us do what we do and like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good day. Um, ooh, got a little harmonic there.